Welcome to Real World Facilitation, where we are putting an end to boring meetings and workshops. In this video, I want to share with you briefly uh, my experience. I've just come back from an event in Barcelona, which I designed and then led uh, for senior C-suite executives uh, to, to explore some of the big challenges and priorities that they're working on right now. So I'm not going to talk about the client uh, for this, um, and it's a shame I can't show you some of the photos and videos that we have because uh, you know obviously this stuff's client confidential. But what I am going to share with you is the brief, the design, how it worked, some of the tips and tricks that made it really work successfully, um, and hopefully that might be useful to you in your armory. So the event began for me quite some time ago with the kind of brief from the client. So the brief I was working with is this is a very senior audience of the VIP customers for this client. There's about 100 of them um, and they have a one day event which they wanted to pull them together and part of that event they wanted to use for discussion and sharing. There were some set topics that they wanted to explore, some of the industry trends for this particular client, um, but they really wanted to make sure that those C-suite participants got a chance to talk and share amongst themselves. They wanted to be able to capture some of that conversation so they could play that back later to those uh, participants so they got something useful to take away from this, not just a conversation. So I set to work on coming up with some options, some designs for how we might run that session. And I guess, you know, the design principles I'm working with is it needs to be an interactive conversation between the participants. So what we didn't want it to be is what sometimes called a chalk and talk session, i.e. somebody talking from the front and people getting a chance to ask a few questions. We wanted it to be led by and the, the participants themselves driving the topic of the conversation and sharing amongst themselves. So that was part of the design brief. We needed to be able to capture what was going on, but you're not able to record this stuff, so there's no video or audio recording of these discussion sessions because they are potentially sensitive. Um, so we needed a way of capturing things as we went that allowed us to, to follow up later. So the plan that we uh, landed on, we had several meetings with the client to talk about the challenges and to try and shape something that was going to work, work for the session. Um, and what we came up with was to go right back to basics and use post-it notes. So um, it's amazing really with the, all the technology that you can use and all the facilitation exercises that you could build around this to create a dynamic that you wanted. Actually, what we went for in the end was post-it notes and whiteboards. So my role was to design an event that would work for the client's team to facilitate. We had up to 100 people, we knew that we were going to have at least three topics and we were going to have a number of breakout groups so that we could get them to a manageable number. Now ideally, I always think the best number, if you had to choose, is six participants in a conversation. That gives you a diversity of opinion but it's intimate enough that everybody's involved. We, in this event, planned for up to 10 in each of our groups so that we could manage the space um, and manage the number of people that might be interested in each of them. My role then was to design the session and create a briefing for the client's facilitators. Now these are experienced people, very senior folk in the client, had lots of experience of facilitation. So the, one of the great challenges was to try and get them to work in a consistent way so that they are all following the same process, albeit they're having their own conversation and bringing their own energy and their own expertise to each of those groups. So we designed a pretty simple process whereby we got, first thing we did was got into the hands of the participants in each group a post-it note. So we got them post-it note and a pen and asked them to write down what was their priority or their challenge that they wanted to share and talk about uh, right now in this group. That gave us a fantastic start and of course right back to basics we've got firstly going on there is they're setting the agenda. We're making it really clear this is going to be their agenda. Secondly the post-it notes once stuck up on the whiteboard give you immediately your agenda. You know how much content you've got, you know how much overlap there is in what people want to talk about 
And then thirdly, it gives you a great opportunity to then dive into the areas uh, and have more exploration of what's going on for each of those, er those of priorities. We purposely chose the word priority and, and or challenge uh, in order to fit with a fairly wide response. So initially we talked about using the word, what is your question that you want to ask today or, or explore with this group? And the challenge we thought there is as a facilitator, you think about how is the participant gonna take that? When they hear that, what is my question? Well, I don't really have a question. And, and if I was asking a question, do you want a big strategic kind of question or do you want something quite specific to a particular? So it's quite a difficult word to respond to. So we purposely chose the word priority because there is no senior C-suite executive that can't tell you what their top three priorities are right now. Um, and we allowed that into challenge if there was a particular area that they wanted to kind of explore. Really important to think about that in your in, in setting questions for groups. So in the session, we had all these post-its go up. I'm watching this session, by the way, at this point. So in the in live, I'm the lead facilitator. So we had 18 people running the groups and I'm walking around making sure it's working. At this stage is when I was most terrified because I'm seeing all the post-its in people's hands and I'm not yet seeing anything arriving on a whiteboard. And that, of course, is a terrifying moment. But you know, in your, in your heart, after 20 years of doing this, you know that's going to work. You give someone a post-it note and ask them what's your priority, they will write something. Uh, and of course they all did and then we were swamped with uh, post-it notes everywhere, which made me feel very happy and then gives, of course, the facilitators now their content. So what we then did was uh, had each of the cards or, or those post-it notes, uh, you pick a post-it note or a group of post-it notes and the facilitators then ask a bit more about that. We designed two specific questions that they should immediately ask. And of course, the conversation flows however it chooses to flow, doesn't it? Um, but in facilitating it in a way that gets you to uh, an outcome that you want, so something captured that's clear, we ask them to first say, for this challenge or priority, who else recognises this challenge or priority? And the word recognises was used in, importantly to say, well, it might be something you share, or it might be something you've already done, or it might be something uh, that you know you have to get to eventually. So it's kind of a wide, again, way of getting other people involved. And the reason for asking it in that way is you want the rest of the group to come in on that point. Do they all have that problem? Have they solved that problem? And then the second part of the conversation was to say, has anybody made some progress with this? Tackled it, dealt with it, are making our, our planning towards it? And that was a way of us getting into what we really wanted to explore, which is who's who's actually solving this problem? Who's getting over this challenge? And what are they doing? What can we share amongst the group today? So that worked. We had an hour long session uh, covering those. They were flying. Once, once they got started and the post-it notes got up on the whiteboards, that really got right into the conversation. I could see lots of everybody leaning in, everybody involved in the conversation and getting lots out of it. And then in the write-up, we were able to get photographs of all of those boards and then produce an executive summary, which really just gave you the the priorities and some of those great strategies that people were employing to get over those priorities uh, in a really crisp note that we sent to the executives afterwards. So a really good session. It went really, really well. High stress because you're looking at this group. We didn't know how many people we were going to have. So we had 100 people registered, but because these are senior and you know, real VIPs, they are often suddenly pulled off in a different direction. Uh, so we had to manage the session so that we were ready to deal with a full hundred or, or half of that. In fact, most stayed, which was really good. Most were there for all of it, which is really, really good to see. And you know, one of the indicators that something's working. Um, and then the real takeout for me was that sometimes going back to basics is important. Uh, initially, I thought giving people post-it notes who are C-suite executives and very large international companies, <laughs> it might might be a little bit too, you know, toy town. But, but in reality, it just brought it straight back to showing we're not here to dazzle uh, and, and create lots of pajazz with technology. We want to talk, we want to share together. And so that dynamic that was set by making it really quite lo-fi 
to the hi-fi with quite a low fidelity kind of let's just get some post-its out worked really well so it, for me it was a great reminder of being in a big room in an international venue with lots of senior folk and having a great buzz in the room and everyone talking and it was a reminder of why i do what i do why i am a facilitator uh, going back to basics was fascinating really you know right, right back trying post-its again but I'd love to know what you think about all of that. I hope there's some useful bits in there for you. Uh, but do you use Post-its still? Would you use Post-its with a senior audience? It's quite a, uh, quite a challenge when I first wrote it, but love to know what you think. Please like and subscribe to this channel. I uh, like the video if you like it. It does help us out enormously. Uh, we've got lots more content and lots more to come.